when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and, and an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about Ilhan Omar being kicked off of the Foreign Affairs Committee in Congress and some of her fellow squad members' reaction to it, namely AOC, Rashida Tlaib, and a few other people. Now, this was hilarious to see AOC behave like this. It was so fake. It was like she saw other people speak, and she studied their body language and their intonations and their general speech patterns. She tried to emulate it. Obviously, that's not how Miss Ocasio-Cortez speaks normally, but it was funny seeing her emulate this. And before I go any further, let's go ahead and roll the clip. If you want to see these clips in full, links will be in the description box. If you're on IG, go to the link in the bio and to the corresponding article on the website. But let's go ahead and roll it. Thank you. Now... As also as a fellow New Yorker, I think one of the things that we should talk about here is also one of the disgusting legacies after 9-11 has been the targeting and racism against Muslim Americans throughout the United States of America. And this is an extension of that legacy. Consistency, there is nothing consistent with the Republican Party. Is it about Ilhan Omar being Muslim and that's the reason why she was removed? Or was it because of her anti-Semitic comments? Is it because she's not really a good person to have in Congress let alone on the Foreign Affairs Committee, okay? It, it may, maybe that's the reason why. There are Muslims in Congress, in local government, et cetera, that don't behave the way that Ilhan Omar behaves. Some people did something. Remember that whole thing? I don't think every Muslim feels that same way. Parties continued attack, except for the racism and incitement of violence against women of color in this body. I had a member of the Republican caucus. So it went from Muslim Americans to women of color, just that quick. It went from a, a religion thing to now a, a race and gender thing. We pretty much got all the bases covered, all the victim Olympics bases covered. This threatened my life, and you all and the Republican caucus rewarded him with one of the most prestigious committee assignments in this Congress. Don't tell me this is about consistency. Don't tell me that this is about this, an abdicate. What was going on with this black preacher uh, hooping uh, body language? I'm not really feeling this too tough. Leave that in a church of God in Christ, uh, Upper Mount Zion Baptist Church in uh, Peoria, Illinois, or wherever you got that from. I'm not really feeling that too tough right now on this TV screen. A condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks when you have a member of the Republican caucus who, have, who has talked about Jewish space lasers and, and an entire amount of tropes and also elevated her to some of the highest committee assignments in this body. This is about targeting women of color in the, in the United States of America. Don't tell me because I didn't get a single apology Time expired. when my life was threatened. Thank you. <laughs> So, so there you have it. There's, there's AOC melting down about the whole Ilhan Omar thing. She covered everything. You're talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene, the whole Jewish space lasers thing, talking about, I'm not sure who the guy was that she's uh, saying that threatened her life. I don't don't know who that, was it Ted Cruz or somebody? I have no idea. But she spoke about pretty much everything aside from Ilhan Omar and what she did to get herself removed from the Foreign Affairs Committee, you know, Accountability to some of these people on the left is not really their strong suit. Now, here's um, Rashida Tlaib talking about the same situation. And I hear that she broke down in tears. I've not seen this yet, so we're going to watch it together for the very first time. Let's check it out. Censor Congresswoman Omar in the same week, they introduced a bill to ban federal employees from engaging in censorship. Where are the free speech warriors today? The hypocrisy is obvious to the American people. You are. But, you know, the whole thing about free speech, like they'll on the left, they say the same thing that I'm going to say. They say you can say whatever you want, but I mean, there might be consequences if you go in front of people and talk about what was that? Like, uh, what, not 9-11? Some people did something. You say stuff like that. I mean, how are you going to also be on the Foreign Affairs Committee? You know, it, it doesn't make any sense. There's, uh, there's an obvious conflict of interest. You're not going to do the best job in that position. Showing who you all are, really. The gentlewoman's time has expired. Omar will not be silenced. The gentlewoman's time has expired. Omar, 
I am so sorry, has expired. Sir, that our country is failing you today through this chamber. You the, belong the gentlewoman is no longer recognized, and the, the gentleman from Mississippi is recognized. Okie dokie. I guess that was her crying. Um, I was trying to go full screen and see some tears. You know, I, I was trying to go full screen, see some tears. I, I was just hearing the voice cracking. But that, to be fair, this is not necessarily the best quality video. So maybe the tears aren't, aren't going to be, they're not going to register in this video. But I was having a hard time seeing any kind of tears come out. I was just hearing the, the crying voice. Okie dokie. But let's go ahead and get to this particular article and read a little bit more. You know, I, got, I like to, I love to read articles and, and read more here. So you see the headline, the House votes to kick Rep. Ilhan Omar off committee over anti-Semitic remarks. Now, maybe this person right here would say something about it. Let's check it out. So you see this is this video is about that. Let's see if he says anything as to why she was removed from her committees. The representative can say whatever the heck she wants. But we don't have to accept it. There we go. Or embrace it. Yes. Individuals who hold such hateful views should rightly be barred from that type of committee. We cannot let the poisonous ideology of anti-Semitism permeate into policy decisions that impact the lives of millions of Jews around the world. So, so there it is. That, that's pretty much what was said, okay? Or past anti-Semitic comments. Let me see if they're going to put them on the screen. Let's go ahead and get to the article and see if they list what she said. But we already know what it is. The main thing, some people did something. Um, and it, there's other stuff. It's all about the Benjamins. We know what Ilhan Omar is. We know who she is. There's no, there's no mystery here as to what she is. Okay. Now to correct myself, I don't think the some people did something is expressly anti-Semitic, but it is a hateful thing to say because we know who did what and why they did it. Well, sort of. We know what the official story is. I put it to you that way. Now, as far as who actually did it, I don't know. But to say what she said is not really appropriate, and also. Talking about all about the Benjamins and stuff like that. That's not very good. But let's see what they say here. So the vote to yank o Omar from the powerful panel after heated the floor debate broke him on party lines. Of course, David Joyce of Ohio voted present in the GOP. GOP cited GOP urge cited six statements that o Omar 40 made while in office that under the totality of circumstances disqualify her from serving on the Committee of Foreign Affairs. All members, both Republican and Democrats alike, who seek to serve on foreign affairs should be held to the highest standard of conduct due to the international sensitivity and national security concerns under the jurisdiction of this committee. That's that's an obvious fact right there. There's your your, your friend Ilhan Omar. I wonder what's under that turban. Do you have like dreadlocks, cornrows, a low cut, bald head? Like what's going on? But that's just my curiosity. Y'all please pardon me. Uh, Dean Phillips, a Jewish Democrat who was called out progressives for stoking anti-Semitism with attacks on Israel, said he opposed resolution because, quote, we believe in the human capacity to make amends and that atonement should be rewarded, not punished. So I guess maybe they're saying, oh, she said she's sorry or she's apologetic or whatever. So it's fine. But, you know, this same guy um, would not give that kind of grace to Donald Trump. You see, one thing about it, people could say that she could say whatever she wants to say about Israel and Jews is her opinion and she shouldn't be removed from the foreign affairs committee. That's not how things work in DC. When people are on the other side that cause a problem, you, you punish them because they would do the same thing to us. They do do the same thing to us. So you got to play the game to win. You can't just be like, Oh, I'm going to just be no, no, no. You got to play the game to win. So if they want to attack us, they want to punish us. They want to play dirty. Well, we got to get right in the ring. It's like you're in the ring with a UFC fighter, not wanting to throw your hands. It's like, okay, you can throw your hands or get not clean, smooth out. It's your choice. Make it or don't make it. And if you don't make it, it'll be made for you. And you be on that mat flopping like a fish after you get kicked square in your dome piece. But anyway, there, there's more here. I mean, I guess they'll talk about what's going on um, to, you know, to, to get down to the, the, the meat and potatoes talking about Israel's an apartheid state and all of this talk. talk okay. Here, here's one thing I want to get to before I close this article out in 2021, Omar compared Israel to terrorist organizations like Hamas and the Taliban during a foreign affairs committee hearing and decry America's Middle Eastern ally as and quote apartheid state. So 
Yeah, you don't want a person like that on the Foreign Affairs Committee because you got to get along with places like Israel and whatnot. So if she's saying stuff like that, that's going to create a conflict. It, it just is what it is. But as I close, I want to say this. Shout out to everybody in the Republican Party for uh, punishing Ilhan Omar. And I hope that it's not just relegated to people that have negative views about Israel. I mean, I guess that's one way you could get people, but there needs to be more than that. Because these people on the left are ridiculous. They do things that are terrible for the country. And I don't want to just see things like this where it's like, okay, be kind of virtue signaling if that's what it is. Hopefully it's not. I want to see people that are doing other negative things get punished as well. Okay, when you are stoking violence toward people, like when Maxine Waters talking about when you see Republicans out there, surround them and make a scene, confront them. I want to see people like that get punished as well removed from their committees, not just one particular person for one particular very niche issue. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? How do you feel about this removal of Ilhan Omar from the Foreign Affairs Committee? Was it the right thing to do, wrong thing to do? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys pretty much know where I'm at. I say it's a good start. Ilhan Omar, one of many that needs to be removed. One of many. Let's do a lot more. And while we're at it, Talking about committee removals and whatnot. Let's talk about getting some of these investigations done in a sincere and earnest way. Like the whole Hunter Biden laptop kerfuffle. Let's get down to the bottom of that. Let's get down even to Creepy Joe himself in the laptop and 10 for the big guy and business deals in China, Ukraine, Moldova, et cetera, et cetera, so on and so forth. Let's get down to the bottom of that. Ilhan Omar, good start, but there is much more to go. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.